Hello. Hello. How are you? It's Kyle McLaughlin here, having a cup of coffee and ready to take your questions about Twin Peaks. So I'll have a sip and we'll start. Damn good coffee. Okay. First question is from Lars N. And Lars says, what was the first thing that went through my mind when David Lynch got the green light to make a new season of Twin Peaks? Lars, the first thing I thought about was how much cherry pie I was going to have to eat. Fortunately, not that much. Anyway, um, David called me um, on the phone and said he needed to speak with me, but he couldn't talk with me over the phone, so we met in person in New York, and he said that he and Mark Frost, co-creator, were going back into Twin Peaks, and was I up for joining? And I said... Absolutely, I said, and I was really excited with the idea of going back to play the character of Dale Cooper and to work again with David Lynch as the director. So, no hesitation. M. Ma J. asks, did you feel like Twin Peaks changed your life? Uh, yes, Ma, for the better. Um, I met some terrific people on the show, um, got to create a very special world of Twin Peaks, um, and felt a little bit like we um, changed uh, the face of television back in 1989 and 90. So, lots of good things. Jennifer H. asks, You've often said that Agent Cooper has been a character that has stayed with you. What is your favorite memory from the original run, and what has been your favorite memory from this run? Ah. Um, Cooper has always been with me. He's one of my favorite characters um, that I've ever done. Uh, he's a complex mix of sort of Boy Scout morality mixed with a real interesting curiosity uh, along with a great uh, empathy for people and uh, an interesting sense of humor, not to mention his complete pleasure in drinking coffee and eating cherry pie. Uh, some early memories uh, from the first show, really, um, there, were, there were a lot, and most of them have to do with other cast members and spending time with them on the screen. So uh, everyone from uh, Michael Onkeen, who was just a real pleasure, uh, through all the different members of the cast. So um, those are really fond memories. And of the current one, I think the opportunity to try a couple different characters within this new world of Twin Peaks. Um, so we've been experimenting and going on very interesting journeys, as you know, if you've been watching. So, there you go. Stephen G. asks, as an artist, do you enjoy playing a hero or a villain more, and why? Um, I, Stephen, I just love the process of acting, and I can't even really tell you why, but um, I do enjoy inhabiting um, another character, and in the current Twin Peaks, I'm having a, or I should say I had a great time playing the role of Mr. C, who is not a nice guy. Um, so that was a real departure for me, uh, and a challenge, actually, to really get into him completely. Um, also a challenge to play Dougie, uh, the innocent, and to work with Naomi Watts, who is a real pleasure. Um, she's a lot of fun, and being able to be like a comic foil off of her was 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 terrific so there you go Jacqueline E asks if you weren't acting as Agent Cooper with what Twin Peaks character would you want to portray oh Jacqueline maybe I'd want to be the giant he'd be pretty cool right think you know think about that you could you could dunk a basketball without even jumping so maybe the giant Sam H. asks, what's been the most surprising thing about coming back to Twin Peaks 25 years later? My knees and the fact that they don't work as well. That's the thing, Sam. Um, it's uh, one surprising thing was the first day coming back to the set and walking on that set in the black suit and seeing David Lynch sitting in the director's chair there and we hadn't had that relationship in place for a number of years and uh, it was uh, surprising in that it felt completely natural and comfortable and like no time had passed and it was very exciting too because I knew we were about to embark on an extraordinary journey which we're halfway through right now. 
Eden L. asks, before Laura Dern, what did you picture Diane would look like? Um, I have to ask you a question. Was there ever a time before Laura Dern? I don't think so. Can you imagine anyone else but her playing Diane? She's perfect. Amanda O. asks, how has David Lynch changed as a director? And how has his creativity influenced you as an actor? These are some very serious questions, Amanda. How has David changed as a director? Well, he has changed his shirt, which is very, very good. Uh, no, David is known for wearing um, same clothing um, almost every day. He has a uniform that he enjoys, and that's what he likes to wear, and that's how he feels comfortable, so there you go. As a director, I think he has... I don't know if change is the word. I think he's evolved and and deepened somehow, like every great artist. Um, and I think his uh, sense of accomplishment um, is complete. And his confidence with which he directs and tells the story, I think, is even more profound than it was you know, 25 years ago. And he will continue to evolve as an artist, as I hope we all do. Thanks. Kyle D., great name. What went into the creating of the character of Doppeldale? That's an interesting way to express it. I like Doppeldale. What do you approach what do you approach differently to play different versions of the same character? Okay, creating the character of Doppeldale or Mr. C or just the bad coop. Um, was a process of uh, it was a journey actually from um, the creation of the physical look of him and also the um, insides as well, and finding uh, a deep, dark, uh, not very nice place. Um, so I worked at it from both ends, and um, I was helped tremendously by David. We went through a lot of different looks and changed them uh, slightly as we went through. Um, we had a wonderful um, wardrobe gal on this who helped really refine him as well. Um, we wanted him to be um, a little bit off, and I think that length of hair is perfect because it's not too short, not too long, but it's kind of not right. And that was really key. Um, and for the approach to the characters, for me, it's, um, uh, I don't really know. You know, the wardrobe has a lot to do with it, but I also think just, um, I think in terms of rhythms, so for Doppeldale, he's, he's, almost like, uh, you know how when you look at an alligator or a lizard, they don't move, they don't blink, and they're just very still? And that was, that was the Doppeldale. And then for, for the other, for, uh, for, um, for Dougie, he's also still, but in a different way. He's trying to get out and trying to make sense of the world. So different kind of rhythms. That's how I do it. Cheers. Brian, Brian, would you, if we, I need to take a sip of coffee. Hold on a second. Uh, okay, good. Now I'm going to answer your question. Have you been watching the episodes of The Return when they air on Showtime? Yes, I have. If so, who do you watch them with, where, and what is their reaction to episode 8? Well, <clears throat> I prefer to watch them by myself, in fact. So um, I will watch the episodes... Um, alone in a dark room. No, uh, I watch the episodes by myself. And, uh, you know, I just, um, I too, they're unfolding for me as they're unfolding for everybody out there uh, in real time. So while I read the script and filmed it, I, I don't know what they look like in their completed form. So I'm having as much fun, hopefully, as you are. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Amelia Camoratti. D'Italia, no, I'm just kidding. She asks, what did you miss most about the Twin Peaks world during your decades off? Well, Amelia, nine decades, coming back finally. I really missed the free coffee, if I must say. Um, I missed working with David Lynch. That's been the best thing. Amanda Courtney Osborne. Amanda has three names. 
Hi, Kyle. Explanation points. One, two, three. Since you have worked with David Lynch at different times in your life, how has he changed as a director and how has his creativity influenced you as an actor? Thanks. Sending you a big thumbs up from Atlanta. Right back at you, Amanda. How hot is it in Atlanta, by the way? I was just down in, um, in Georgia. I was down near Savannah, Sea Island, and it was so hot. I mean, it was so hot. Can I say that again? It was so hot. Anyway, um, working with David, um, you know, he, David hasn't changed. He's just, he's just evolved and will continue to do so. Um, and his, crea his creative influence on me has been profound. I mean, David cast me in my first two films, Dune and Blue Velvet, um, which is a pretty remarkable way to come into the film, film world. Um, so he's had a tremendous influence on me. Um, and I think most significantly it's that he allows me to trust what I do. And he has a very good eye. So if he ever feels something is false or not exactly what he's going for in his story, um, he'll discuss it with me and we'll find a way through. So I feel very much um, a partner in the working process. Thanks. Tim Pippinich. Hello, Tim. Tim Pippinich here. Do any of your... Sorry, that's a total, you know, my son would be cringing right now for what I'm doing, but that's all right. I know you understand. Do any of your life stories or experiences contribute to your always memorable, idiosyncratic characters, such as Cooper or other Lynch characters? Any of my life stories? Um, I'm pretty boring in my life, actually, Tim, i got to say. Um... So, um, but I tell you what I do um, as an actor. I, I do like to observe behavior, and I like to watch people. And um, I like to put myself in their position, if I can, as much as I can, and to try to understand why they do what they do. And that's part, I guess that's part of the fun as being an actor. One of the things I really like uh, is that exploration and try to figure out what, would motivate someone to do that, or why do they move that way, or why do they say that, or why do they wear those clothes? It's about trying to find the inside life. Thanks. Nessa Espino, Nessa Espino asks, how do you feel about younger generations taking an interest in Twin Peaks? Um, I'm excited, it's pretty cool, actually. Um, I remember when, uh, years ago, before they announced the new Twin Peaks, um, primarily through social media, I would hear stories about how uh, younger people were exposed to Twin Peaks, the original Twin Peaks, through their parents, or maybe they found it because they were in college or someone suggested it to them, and they were sharing the DVDs around and, and now streaming. And uh, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Most, important, most interesting, I think, is that they, that they still find it, um, they're still... Um, is they find it still watchable, you know what I mean? Because the rhythms and tempos from 1989 and 90 in terms of just filming and watching, it's different now, you know, it's much quicker. But somehow, um, and this is the brilliance of David Lynch, the, the rhythms and the tempos exist there for a very specific reason. So if you l allow yourself to become one with those rhythms, you, you're in for a great experience, which I think is also a comment on the original, on the one now, the new Twin Peaks. I think you have to allow yourself to be carried along in the whole, um, in the whole rhythm of the show, and it will be very satisfying and frightening. Andrea W. asks, do you ever look back at your performance while you are re-watching the episodes and feel as though there's something you can change? Um, yes. It's the curse of being an actor. But as I've gotten older, I've also realized that maybe it's there for a reason that I don't even understand or know. And hopefully you just trust the moment and that you have filled it as much as you possibly can um, and as truthfully as you possibly can. And then you just let the story roll. So I've gotten a little better about being so judgmental about my work, my early work. Jack Williams asks, hey, Kyle, what, I feel like Jack, hey, Jack, hey, Kyle, what would you say was your favorite episode of Twin Peaks to film, either in the original, The Return, or even Firewalk With Me? 
Favorite episode? Uh, wow, there's a lot of really fun episodes. Anything where I get to eat or drink something is a lot of fun. Um, also, throwing the rocks at the bottle, episode two, uh, two or three, depending on how you count the pilot, in the first season, the very first season back in 89. That was a lot of fun. We got to throw rocks at a bottle and try to break a bottle. I mean, what's more fun than breaking a bottle with rocks, right? So that was pretty good. Um, and I, you know, any, any sort of little back-to-back -back banter. I also enjoyed um, the, um, the death of Leland, and it's sort of a hard, <laughs> weird to say that, but I thought it was a really beautiful scene. Um, and it was the, with the rain coming down. Well, it wasn't rain. It was the water from the sprinklers. Um, and there was something about it that was very difficult to do, but very moving, I thought, and appropriate. So, I don't know. There's a bunch of them. It, probably, you know, anything that I shoot with David, is that's really the most fun. Thanks. We have time for three more questions? I've got to stop talking. Uh, Angel Andre Osorio. A little personal question. What do you like to do to distract yourself when you are not working? Great performance. Thanks a lot for coming back, Carl. Thank you very much, Angel. Um, you know, I um, do it's a couple of things. It's just kind of mundane. You know, I like to spend time with my son. Um, you know, we, we go out sometimes and, and catch Pokemon together, which is a lot of fun. Um, I enjoy golf. And so just to get away from everything, I'll go out and, you know, go to the range and hit golf balls, that kind of thing. Um, and, um, and then I go to the gym. I don't know. It's, you know. I like to cook. Those kind of things. That's it. Not very exciting. Two more questions. Whew, gotta hurry. Alessia C. asks, do you have any Twin Peaks merchandise at home, like the mug you have there? Whoa! Finally got to use one of those paddles. Everyone in the room here was wondering if I was ever going to use one of those paddles. Mmm. Do I have any merchandise? I don't have much merchandise. Oh, you know what I do have? I do have that um, Funko uh, Cooper doll. That's pretty wild and confusing to me because he's holding a mug of coffee and yet he doesn't have a mouth. So I'm not quite sure what that means. Go Funko. <laughs> All right, we have time for one more question. They're getting me one right now. They're getting me really a good one to finish up with. So hold on to your hats. Amy Elliott, what's the weirdest dream you've ever had about Twin Peaks? Hmm. The weirdest dream I've ever had about Twin Peaks. I'm trying to remember if I actually dream about Twin Peaks. I mean, so much of Twin Peaks is like a dream anyway, right? Um... So my dream would be comparatively normal when you put it up against the show of Twin Peaks. I don't know. I'm trying to think if I've had a Twin Peaks dream. Have you had a Twin Peaks dream? Hey, um, I think that's it. I think we're out of time. Is that right? Okay, so um, yes, that's that's it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, kids of all ages, uh, is all the time we have. So thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for your questions. I hope this has been somewhat entertaining, and um, we'll do it again sometime. Cheers.